Star Trek 57, M23, take two. It's Scott Star Trek, episode 95, Lower Decks, season 2, episode 6, A Spy Humongous. You know, I was a little skeptical at first, but I really am feeling way more captain than usual. Now you have to start living like one, too. Oh, you mean like sitting in a centered chair all day, or...? Nothing tells you about a captain more than the officers they've chosen to have at their side. That's true in your social life as much as it is on the bridge. Oh, I've got that covered. My friends are awesome. Look, that's them right there. <laughs> they've been consolidating anomalies all day. It's pretty cool, right? No, not cool. Those three are always elbow deep in some kind of slime. Yeah, we work in Starfleet. I mean, slime's a given. No, we work in Starfleet. They work for Starfleet. Okay, hold on. They're the same rank as you or me. And while we've been playing captain all day, they've been doing real work to help the ship. This isn't a friendship. It's a starship. Are you a star or not? What? Okay, so why don't we just start the podcast mm. because everyone's all yeah. jibber jabbering. It's and jibber jabber jibber 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 Juice, uh, that's what you're going to get. So, okay, we'll do the main bits. I'm first. caffeinated. You are caffeinated. I am as well. Uh, I like that. Now it's being caffeinated. Got Star Trek podcast. Is this uh, 95? Yes, the It's Got Star Trek podcast number 95. 95. 95. A 95. 95. Discussing Lower Deck Season 95. 2, 95. Episode 6, uh, Spy Humongous. Humongous. Okay, now we can begin the podcast. So what title, what, what, is, what is it playing? What title is that playing on? A Spy Among Us. Is that playing on something? Oh, Spy yeah. Among Us. That's a what Spy I Among yeah, Us yeah. is a phrase and yeah. a title of Fungus thing. Among Us. Right. And well, yeah, it's, movies and... Well, see, I was, I, I was thinking... There's a Spy Among Us, I tell you. I was thinking it was Spy Among Us. Among Us. Um, is this yeah. like the cutest episode ever? It's pretty cute. There's some, it's, there's it's some cute. Really, wait, really wait, 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 wait! I'm not done saying my thing. Okay, yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I was just gonna say. All right. I was thinking it was Spy Among Us, but then I was, I was like, there's nothing really incredibly like in the pop culture zeitgeist about po- Spy Among Us. There is. It's kind of old school. There's like it is old. School. There's like spy, a spy who shagged me, and then there's the there's James a, there's Bond a spy a who loves spy who loves there's me. There's a fungus among there's us. A fungus among us, or. That you, just rhymes. You I could do a fungus a humongous. Right? So, but That's... so you don't think it was the spy who loves me? You think it was the spy? I do among not. Us. I, do, I do not think it was the spy who loved me. That was a I James was, Bond movie. I know, I know that it was. I know, I know that it's. A I don't James know if you're Bond. aware, but that was a James Bond movie. Yes. That's why it makes Starring sense. Starring Sir Roger Moore. We should start a restaurant called Hummus Among Us. <laughs> okay. All right. So a spy, a spy among us, a spy. Humongous, as opposed to <laughs> the spy, <laughs> the spy who loved me. <laughs> the guy berate us. The guy berate That's us. That's a lot of free association. <laughs> okay. the, the, All right, the, fly, I get it. the fly burrito. I, I get it. Okay, I get it. Is it, it after it. named after the fly burrito? I get it. You're fooling around. You're I'm just, fooling I'm just, around. I'm just funning. I'm. I get it. I'm cool with it. It's a joyous time. He can only laugh around. at me if he thinks that I'm not in on it. No, I laugh at him in all all manner of context, <laughs> in a variety of contexts. Okay, so so a spy humongous. So away, so away. So 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 button. So so this episode. Show. This episode has rich rich vulture in it again. Again, uh, and not only uh, and not only is he uh, re- reprising his role as uh, you know uh, one of the pack led but he plays like most of the pack led <laughs> in this episode except for uh, Brian Posehn yeah, plays the queen he plays the out of breath pack led at the beginning <laughs> oh i thought it said okay well it's Brian Posehn oh, wait, wait. her majesty well it says it says queen pack led that Brian Poussaint. He played. might have, I don't know, but he also put, played, uh, I think, one of the Pat the guy that delegates. All runs out all like, <gasps> yeah, but the guy who runs out. <laughs> yeah, so, like, yeah, that's yeah. that's Brian Poussaint. 
You I mean, guys. It's, it's clearly Brian. It Murphy. was the guy. Yeah, when he when he ran out and he he said like, uh, "Guys, the prisoner Rumdar. He ran away from the Packled Planet to his ship." <laughs> Who I was, is this? But he didn't saying? say it like that. You should say it like the Packled fellas. Who's this I, Brian? I can't say it like that. <laughs> well, at first I was like, "That sounds like John C. Riley," but I know it's not John yeah, C. Yeah, Riley. But that makes sense. It's Brian Posehn because on IMDb, if it's to be believed, it says it, it has him listed oh. as playing Queen Packled, which can't be right because that sounded yeah, like IMDb. That sounded Come like on. that sounded like Katie Seagal or something. Thing, which yeah. obviously it wasn't, but that'd be cool if that was. Yeah, I don't. Yes. I don't would believe it was Katie. Uh, Lauren Lapkus was in it. Yes, Lauren Lapkus plays Jennifer, so she's been popping in and out. Uh, yeah, but she Jennifer. Had, she had more uh, more lines than she usually has in this episode, so it was fun to get her character fleshed out a little Who bit. Who played that head asshole? Neil Casey. Okay, that's Neil Casey. Neil okay. Casey plays Casey Ensign Casey. Uh, okay, I couldn't. I couldn't remember the. I, I didn't even remember the name of the character. So, yeah. well, it's and, and Neil Casey is if you if you, you might not know his name, but if you look him up, you'll know the fella. You've seen him in in lots of different places. His voice sounded familiar. He's a funny guy. Um, and Carl Tart is back as Kayshawn. Yeah. We've been seeing Kayshawn in the background, but now he's got he's got a number of lines this time, which is cool. And and he's actually speaking, you know, the common tongue and not. Well, he well, he, phrases. Little bit, he, he goes, little uh, bit. he goes. He uh, goes. Uh, you're getting Boz Monty when he pulled back the veil vibes from this guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then there was another one about eyes or something. Cindy, his eyes red. Or yeah, Cinda, his eyes red. Cinda. Yeah, something like that. And, and they but all, I like how they. I said like how, that one before. I liked how they mixed it in with like norm. Uh, yeah. with a language that we understand as well. It, in the it, way, because so, it, it like has a weird. It's a weird juxtaposition. It's the equivalent of when you have a sitcom with a a person who was uh, born outside of this country. And when they encounter mm. a stressful situation, right. yeah. shout out something along the lines of, Mamma mia, baba baguza, like, like you gotta get to the grocery store before the sale is over, or whatever the Yeah, or if they're like, um, plot line this, is. this hamburguesa is no bueno, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's exactly what I meant, but I do appreciate you listening. That was... T- and then... <laughs> um, and then Taking your, taking the analogy you were, and, and turning it into your own words to confirm whether or not we're on the same page. The, that is good communication strategy. But you said it, I, I didn't get what you said, so that apparently wasn't good communication. No, it's good communication strategy to get to the point where we could have the option, I don't think we'll exercise it, but we could have the option of continuing the conversation so that so, I could reframe, because I didn't communicate properly in the first place, so I could reframe it so that I could try to get you to get closer to the vibe i was getting at so and it's, it's a it's a reciprocal pop, so you're process. it's not like what people call spanglish or whatever is what you're referring to you're not referring to spanglish style, style where it's like you mix the language the words you switch I randomly what back you're no, he's talking about it like a comedy I, sort of you, so i'm thinking more like old, like 1950s yeah. you know like yeah. ricky ricardo right. yeah. would yeah. always speak okay. perfectly normally but then when Except he was when in he, a, yeah. he would go a off stressful string, situation yeah. and he'd all start going like yeah lucy lucy would be doing getting up to some mischief and ricky ricardo would respond by speaking in a stream of cuban ricky ricardo uh and star trek the original series yes. <laughs> you've given that's, that's exactly right. you've given the components of a fact <laughs> yeah i know yeah. i couldn't remember what applied where well, this is a new puzzle we're offering our <laughs> listeners which is we'll lay out a few pieces of a fact <laughs> and it's your job to they were almost uh, they were like almost blacklisted funny. because they were they were like socialists Mm. Yeah, they, yeah, Lucy and Ricky were were pretty left wing. You wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily think that. At some point, we were talking about it's got politics. A spy humongous. We were talking about some spy humongous. All right, so those those idiots have a pretty nice looking planet. You mean the red shirt? Oh no, the pack leads. Yeah, uh, I thought you were talking about the. I, I call them they, they call themselves the red shirts, and I yeah, call them the red uh, shits. The red shits. Ha, the the pack leads have funny. like just at this point they've collected enough stuff. Yeah, they've they're are a threat now. Yeah, know. well, yeah, and that, all their buildings were made from cool like things. gold, and everything was gold. It was ridiculous. But well, I'm, it's their like, where ships they get are all, all stuff? funny looking. So. Like how they they're apparently good. They're very competent, you know, builders and things like that. I guess for as stupid as they are, they got a nice looking. Well, city. this has come up on the internet a few times where some people were confused, saying, like, "I don't understand. They seem so dumb, but they build all these powerful ships that are kicking ass." Mm. But it was explained when they were introduced in the in TNG. Baglids are strong. Which was a, the whole plot of that story was sort of don't underestimate people kind right. of and they've done that a little bit on uh lower decks as well but in that episode yes they are colossally stupid on the one hand mm-hmm. but they are shown to have a, a really sophisticated capability of cobbling together technology from yeah, a wide yeah. variety of different 
that's right, aliens and yeah. stuff and making it work. Right, so that's what that's their whole gag is. They go around junkyards and stealing stuff, and they they put it together. But, but and, and they're like a low rent Borg. Well, it's true, but you look at the buildings, and those buildings. What stood out to me is that they they didn't look like they were patched together at that's a night. True. Shift. They look like big solid. They look like things. somebody built them. Yeah, and there has there has been discussion, and there'll probably be more in this episode as we as we talk about the the plot line, that it seems clear. And they've dropped some direct hints and inferential hints that somebody else, some other person or group, some individual or group is the puppet master behind the Pakled. Right, right. Pakled's rise in strength all of a sudden. The and Pakled strategic, maestro. Strategic capability. And um, one guess the internet has is lore. Actually, oh, yeah, actually, because there's been a lot of lore references yeah. since the first season, uh, and I think that's a pretty good good guess. But Something we'll, we'll find do, out soon yeah. enough. You know, it's part of the fun. You know, we can guess at it, but I don't know. I kind of think it's more. Um, <laughs> the 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 episode that introduced the Packlids that was like an episode where Captain Picard had to do something else off the ship. Is that is that right? I yeah. I, and, and so Riker Riker was the yeah. one that was actually. Dealing with the Packlids, so like now you see a lot of Riker like fucking fucking up the Packlids. I really do enjoy this ongoing season long arc. It started, I guess, technically last season, but it's been this season long arc in the kind of in the background in some ways where we're getting bits and pieces of this pack led power play mini it's, it's like a mini dominion war plot kinda. yeah <laughs> uh, it's got all the components of the dominion war plot uh just not that'll be our next a, podcast it's got all the components of a dominion <laughs> war <plot. laughs> that is a chaotic uh, uh planet those, those fucking pack lids man they had like you know there was just like people flying in and then it's like who's in charge and what was it uh, uh, <laughs> it's just called the Packlet planet right that's yeah the, that's the everybody was, well everybody was like my helmet's not big enough yeah <laughs> and then like they had like a queen and then they had like a king and then they had an emperor yeah and then they had some rebels that took over and, oh, took, and the rebels were like fuck your helmets. fuck your power struggle and they're like ooh it's so big yeah. that means I'm powerful now that, which is a it. wonderful joke because it's the it's sort of the 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 old tale that happens oftentimes with uh, successful revolutions is that the revolutionaries oh, yeah. simply retain the old power structures mm-hmm. and occupy them themselves and they were even like they were like the spy guy came back and in the the rebels were like yeah it was a trick all along he was working for us. yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was that was confusing, right? Because yeah. <laughs> because yeah, it was um the uh yeah the the big uh the big packlet helmet guy, the new one, the rebel. He's like, we tricked you, Janeway. Yeah, we never wanted. <laughs> Janeway. He said we never wanted peace. Rumdar was a spy, but yeah, I thought the big helmet packlet that came up with that plan had he's the one who had his big helmet taken away from him by the revolutionary. You beat Janeway. So like the guy who would have come up with the plan had his shit taken by the revolutionary, but that would mean that. The, delivering that line wouldn't have been part of the plan because he, he came through the window after Rumdar came up with that shit. Yeah. He wouldn't have known anything about that plan. Right. Like, so they, what, they're all, they're all, they're all in on it. It's, they're all in. They're, yeah. they're all just a bunch of idiots. Yeah. They're all, that's what it is. <laughs> like the board yeah. hive mind. Yeah. The individuals, maybe not so much, but they as a group sur- survive in vacuum. That was that. Yeah. The whole, I mean, <laughs> the, it's a very straightforward plot. I marked this as a C plot. I don't know what you guys, yeah. this is, this is another standard, uh, not standard, but it's sort of, it's common on lower decks, which is kind of interesting given it's a shorter format. They're, they're doing a lot of ABC plots yeah. lately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a lot. And this one, the A, B, and C plots were uh, kind of evenly focused in a way. Uh, the episode paid attention to all three of them, not quite an equal measure, but pretty close. So I kind of, I, I just labeled the Boimler plot, the A plot, the Tendy Mariner Rutherford plot, the B plot. I, I kind of thought one, that that C was plot. like, that was one plot together. Well, they, they come together. I mean, because they sort of intertwine. Well, and, and Dan Dan talks has talked about that in the past, about the difference between the, the A and B I plots have. that are completely right. separate versus right. the ones that maybe they're separate, but they, they tie in together somehow at the end. Now, here they do interweave, but, yeah. the, but the thematic plots are very different until the very end. True. Okay. It, yeah. Right? In the end, then they dovetail together. I think, I, I think I was saying is that, yeah, there's ones that are totally unrelated, but there's also the ones that maybe they don't intertwine, but they're thematically similar yeah. or something. And then- right. and this one just straight up goes. The, I think the three themes are very different in that the the C plot that w- what we've been talking about uh, with which is which is it's self divided into two components because you have Captain Freeman and Shax on the planet in danger 
but also sort of outsmarting the Are you uh, in danger. Yeah, they they the uh, outsmarting the the pack lid down there. What and is then that, what is that from? I don't know. And then sorry. <laughs> oh, pu- that's from Pulp Fiction. Sorry. I was puzzled when he met. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, when he's calling, I was like, I'm sorry, babe. I had, I'm, I'm, I had to crash that Honda. Yeah, right. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just, I just. No, um, it's quite all right. Yeah. Um, it's got. I had to everything. crash that. <laughs> I had it's, to crash that. It's Honda. got deviations. <laughs> <laughs> Sinister. Uh, Sinister. It's got this. It's got this. It's got joke Super all the time. VGA. It does. It does. That's built into the format. Mm-hmm. So, Easy but in, but you've got Captain Freeman and Shax on the planet, and then on the Cerritos, you have Ransom and Kayshawn trying to deal with this uh, pack of uh, Ram- Ramdar, right? And it's a again, it's again, it's a bunch of tomfoolery, but it's good, especially the almost uh, Scooby Doo esque thing when when Ransom and Kayshawn are all like, they're like, oh, hold on a second, and they're talking, they're like, ha, this guy's so dumb. I bet, he, I bet we can get him to tell us some of their secrets, and then they turn around, they're like, where'd he go? You know, I think that Packlet would have had um, a big giant shit. No. I, well, yes, yes, for sure. But I think he would have had more, um, more... Airlock 17. He would have had more success in his spy mission if he had a little bit more Rumdar support. Because nah. of his back. Because Rumdar support will make sure your back doesn't go bad. That's right. I think what you mean is lumbar support. <laughs> lumbar support. Oh, that's what I meant. Not Rumdar support. That's stupid of what I said. I like I'm sorry. They, they yeah. took him to like, the, so the gift shop and like, he was all decked out in like, <laughs> a t-shirt. A t-shirt and, like, yeah, what's up? I, li- I, li- so. yeah, I like all the Starfleet um, uh, merchandise yeah. that they have like within the show. Like the model kits, the Quarks DS, DS9 model kits, and the, yeah. and the official Federation mer- uh, uh, T-shirts and hats and things like that. I bet if they sold those plates, people would buy the shit out of those plates. They do sell oh, those plates. plates. Those specific ones? The Tom Paris. Yeah, they, yeah, they sell I've the Tom Paris plate. plates. Oh, really? Yeah. They sell, that's a real thing they released. Uh, uh, Paramount squad now it's because they got plates of everything people uh, yeah people can talk about exploiting the ip and just trying to make a quick buck but guess what we're star trek fans and we will buy plates that have animated tom paris heads on them and i'm sure they're going to extend that collection and they have all sorts of t-shirts that come out not always that are shown on the show i think you can get a choo-choo t-shirt you can get a choo-choo i'm pretty sure you can get a choo-choo t-shirt i'd like a Train? Holy shit! No, the choo choo. No, you know that dance, dance. the choo choo dance. The oh, sisters, I thought you meant like a. Man. You were instead of saying train, you were saying like a choo choo. <laughs> no, like like, is he seriously saying choo choo right now? <laughs> Dan, like Dan, we're Dan, not gonna Dan, talk, Dan, talk about this. Dan, Dan, Dan really respects me. Why are you talking about taco belling about this? Taco belling. You just said something about we're not gonna taco bell. We're not about gonna this? talk about this. <laughs> I might have meant my 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 mouth might have made the words m- m- mushed up. I, I might just be joking. I think my mouth for a chalupa. I think can my we ma- get some tacos after think, the podcast? Yeah, after the podcast, let's go get some taco bell. I think my mouth is mushed up right now. Um, yeah, taco bell. You can get um. You can get Taco Bell. Let's get some Papa. You can get Taco Bell. Do you get Taco Bell or Taco Bell? <laughs> the you're, age old debate. You're driving me nuts. <laughs> you are. Oh, that's like the pirate with the wheel on his crotch or whatever. Is he's driving me nuts? Drive- Something like that. <laughs> okay. Um, right. So we've we've died. You're we've, just invincible. We've tonight. basically you're discussed invincible. most of the most of the C <laughs> yeah. plot. I, I wanted to distinguish some of the the thematic differences because that's what I was getting at. Is that there yeah, are some yeah, thematic yeah. differences. The C plot. Is with with the Captain Freeman and all that. that that's a more of a move the pack led plot forward. I don't know. I didn't see much thematic action going in there, other than it's a sort of an adventure. There's those dual adventure stories with the tomfoolery on the on the Cerritos as they're like trying to find this guy. I I don't know if this was meant as a gag, but at the very end when they were like, okay, two, Shax was like two to beam out. Like, was that a joke? Because being like. Okay, the Packlets had them prisoner. The Packlets thought they had them prisoner the yeah. whole time, and so they were like they were like imprisoned with the Packlets. And then like when they discovered them, when the um, Shacks and J- uh, Janeway, <laughs> when Shacks and Freeman got what they wanted, Janeway. when J- Shacks and Freeman got what they wanted, they were just like, okay, beam us away now. It was Shacks and Freeman sounds? I'd, I'd go watch them sing in a nightclub. I think yeah. I think that was Shacks on the piano. I think that was a joke, basically being like without I, saying I, so much as we could have done this it, all. We could have done this all it, along, it but was, we didn't. It was, but maybe not as much as you think because i do recall a, there are it, there's at least one maybe two references where shacks is during during their conflict Sh- shacks is suggesting that they beam away and 
and Freeman, Captain Freeman responds, um, no, no, I don't want, you know, if we beam away, this is done. I want right. to, well, yeah. she, she wants to, she wants to stay well, no, there. Totally, no, totally. And but I, yeah, they were never, but, I don't think they ever think, thought they were in danger. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, that, that's totally, ob- that's totally obvious. We're meant to think they are. Well, that, that's totally obvious what happened because they say so in the episode and I, I realized that, but I think, I think there was something, it's like the Packlets thought they had yeah, them. I, I, you know, I, that I, whole I, idea. I, 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 <laughs> okay, Jay. If there was going to be some shit, they would have sent the Titan now. instead of the Get it. Yeah, the serious Titan. They would have sent. If it was going to be of, a, a shit situation, they would have sent somebody else. But the Cerritos. Well, was, they also might have sent the Cerritos because they wanted some expendable people. Just because well, they didn't know what the cap, what too, the pack lid were going to do. There was a lot of Riker talk. I thought for a second, for a, just a half second, I was like, "Are they going to try to turn Boimler into Riker? Is it going to be some creepy situation where suddenly, <laughs> like, because they were like." kept asking about it's like Riker about like you know do you think Riker modifies his uniform and I thought how like, often does Riker clean his trombo oh yeah <laughs> like way too often I need to learn to blow something brass <laughs> yeah that, that whole scene and the and the shot the scene before like segued into each other because it was it's like, like what does he play the flute or something <laughs> yeah it was the, that so that scene began that whole joke began when um when Rutherford got all big and Tendy was like, it's altering his bio matrix. And she gives him some smelling stuff that um, fixes it. I'm big beyond belief. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did say and, that. And, and, and Tendy was all getting, it seemed like she was getting a little excited. Well, pardon she, the, pardon she, the phrase. She said, she said, and this is where the joke began. She goes, you just experienced full molecular engorgement, engorgement. in a matter of seconds. Did it feel amazing? Yes. And that was cut to... <laughs> all, um, like, up. That, then cut, that was cut to uh, Casey saying, hey, Boimler, how often did Riker clean his trombone? Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and, then, and then Boimler's like, it was disruptive. It's like, whoa, that's fucked up. And then, um, then yeah, I need to learn to blow something brass. <laughs> Cleaning his bones so much, it was disruptive. Mas- masturbation. masturbation blow, blow the brass. And blow the brass meaning the higher-ups, the masturbation brass. Masturbation is indeed natural all that c plot stuff is fun i enjoyed that story i love the whole rich vulture i love i already loved that they cast rich vulture as a pack lead and then that they take the gag and have him play like eight pack leads in this episode it's just like rich vultures are going to be the prototypical pack lead it almost made me hope that in an episode of picard they have they encounter a pack lead at some point and it's just a live action rich vulture (laughs) dressed up as a pack lead uh, but okay, so the Boimler story, since we, we touched on that a little pebbles. bit, um, that seems to be the, the sort of the main thematic thing about it's, it's, it's about what the components of leadership are, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yes, it's fairly obvious because it's just, it's a, it's a very hard on its sleeve kind of story where, hard um, on. first of all, I enjoyed that they, um, that when he, when Boimler goes to hang out with the red shits, Ah. First, uh, for a while, I was just calling him the assholes, but then I was like, "Oh, the red <laughs> shits." That's kind of funny. So it's like it's like Jennifer and like it's uh, Jennifer, the other the other cat, the other feline. It's the Zinti Ensign, but we don't get a name. Zinti and, Ensign, then, and then Ensign other, Casey and, and then Ensign uh, then other Castro. Girl. Ensign Castro. Oh, that's Castro. Yeah. Okay. I thought. I thought. No, I didn't. I didn't really think this, and I'll tell you why. But a part of me thought for a second. Also, mm. I thought what percentage. Like it wasn't even a percentage. Doesn't do it justice because it was more like a. a it wasn't an ephemeral op- vibe. It was. It wasn't opaque. You know. It gotcha. Was, it was translucent. It, it was. I thought. I thought that the red shirts. The gag might be is at the end they die or something because they're red shirts. Mm. But then I was like, you know, it's kind of predictable and really mm. and beyond just making the joke that we're invincible because we're the red jokes. The red. The red jokes. We're, we're the red jokes. We're the communist <laughs> jokes. <laughs> Da, 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 da. It was kind of like ha, ta, ta, ta. it was kind of it was kind red of jokes. it was kind of enough and funnier for them to just make a passing reference to it. The as only good red, red is a yeah. dead as, red, as, as opposed to like as they used to say, as opposed to like this big event. But like you know, it's like oh, we're invisible, blah blah. blah. And plus. It's kind of an unnecessary bummer for a joke to have of like course. people die in, in this kind in this kind of show. For but that kind uh, what, of thing. what I what I liked about it was Boimler um, gets ensnared <laughs> ensnared by these people, and they didn't play it as the rest of the group was pissed at him. In fact, uh, Mariner was like, "That's a great idea. I'm jealous yeah. that I didn't come up with it, yeah. you know, or, or I didn't get included to to not have to do this trash duty, uh, the alama- anomaly consolidation duty." Yeah. This is yeah. another um, 
this is another instance where like there's new people with lines, but these aren't new people because we, we we keep, keep seeing, seeing them. them. Like the we even even uh, Ensign uh, Casey, Z- we've I think we've even seen. Oh, yeah. have we even yeah. seen that guy? I'm we, pretty sure we, we've, we've seen that guy. We've definitely seen Ensign point. Casey, and I think he might have had a line or two here yeah, or there back yeah. but before. But like Jennifer, we've seen the cat guy, uh, the the other Castro. Jennifer, we've heard talk a couple times, but Castro, we've, I, we've I, seen I, her. I think we've seen. I, I we may have seen her talk before. I, I honestly can't remember. I can't remember. But, if we, but you're if, right. If they're they're background characters. But we've seen them, just like the Fletcher guy was like yeah we've seen yeah. that he's been in every episode background characters that have been foregrounded yeah. so it's um it's kind of funny that the that, that they're so jaded that a job where you're like cleaning up trash involves all these crazy I adventures know, and I monsters know. is just like boring which like is, garbage which day. is a brilliant <laughs> yeah. joke in the star trek universe because yeah. often they're they're playing up the awe and wonder but the mm. but uh, if you see these things very frequently or you or at least know about them yeah maybe they're that was a cute, not quite as exciting that's a cute part the way that that everything it cute was meat. like this sort of like su- succession of uh ridiculous man of just like yeah just funny little gags and it was you know i i agree i thought it was, it was funny r- stuff that you can happen that it, can you can draw it, it, it was it was a fun time the, the so, with the boimler thing the um the whole leadership thing it, it wasn't too on the nose i thought they they played it out well Mainly, it was really um, it fit Boimler's character. Everything, everything fit it. Boimler being attracted to join these people in the first place yeah. fit the character. The way he behaved around them fit the character, and the way he ultimately resolved the plot when it exactly. dovetails with the other yeah. one was his style, right? Right, because it wasn't just about leadership. The main message is leadership is action, but the secondary message is you got to come up with your own. You got to be you. It's another you got to be you story, yeah. which I, I always like. And it's foreshadowed it in the very beginning where he like he's eating some kind of grits or something. Yeah, like, I was he, like, he, I was going to ask. Smeary on him. It, yeah. it looks oh, like. Yeah. He and he and, he and Mariner Mariner eating grits. I thought it was rice or something. Grits it's makes more like sense. That, but then, yeah. but then, so I forgot. But Tendi and Rutherford were eating beans or something. Yeah. So at the beginning, I didn't really notice it too much. But at the end, when he's like beans, beans hot, and I was like, those look like some refried beans because I don't see any beaniness other than the color. And then I noticed I was the second time that I noticed. Oh, he's eating the same shit, mm-hmm. which is like some kind of refried looking beans. And also, I didn't notice this the first time because I didn't know to expect it. But Mm-mm. there was some kind of minor sort mm-hmm. of vague foreshadowing because mm. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm listening I'm just, I'm just adding some flavor <laughs> I, 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 I want to hear about the foreshadowing it's just little flavors <laughs> audio flavors all right all right so it was right, a, good <laughs> It was um, because Tendi at the beginning was laughing at Boimler being. Now I know. Now all I can think about is you going. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's just gonna do. You're, you, and I know you're gonna start doing gonna, it I'm again. Not, I'm not gonna do oh, it. Oh man, now you have to. No, I feel. I feel. I feel it was rude. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> and I didn't intend it to be rude. I was just. Get, I was getting into the moment. It's no, like no. You're, I, I, you're I, at a concert and the and Mick Jagger's all being like, blah, 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 and you're like, all like, hey. He was holding up a lighter. It was like when holding up a lighter. When you're at a concert, you don't have to make a concerted effort to party. See that one works. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that one works yeah. pretty good. That's all right. <laughs> rum, rum, dar support. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, right. rum, dar support. Rum, dar support. Um, so Tendi was laughing at Boimler being foolish at the beginning when he spilled that yes. shit all over himself, and that's, it wasn't until the second time I was like, oh, that's like that's they the, connect together. That's the book. It bookends the whole yes. that whole thing right there. So, um, yeah, that was pretty. That was pretty. That was pretty neat. Um, so yeah, the the, the, the your Jesse, you were talking about like how it elevates over time or shit keeps happening, and it was. Like, like Tendi at first wasn't getting any any shorter than the stick because it was that she smelled a nice flower and then like it fucked up Mariner and she drops yeah. some clock and it electrocutes Mariner yeah, and like she got like some clock. and she got like Mariner got some like Bugs Bunny like not Bugs Bunny but it was like Warner Brother yes. Bugs Bunny yeah, style yeah, and, I, yes. yeah. and that was that was strong in that and then later I couldn't decide um, if it was and I had the same issue with the music in the um, Efren and Dot actually where I couldn't decide that with the animation was more Warner Brothersy or Disney yes so I thought there I feel like the animation over time I have to rewatch the first season and see it but I feel like I noticed more that the animation is kind of crazy it's like they do, really good they're, they're doing a little it's, extra stuff yeah. and, and the, the other thing with it's Mariner, kind of weird and st- it's kind of like at first it's like weirds me out but it, and I like it because it's kind yes. of it's, you, it's distinct I got the same vibe and mm-hmm. and and I think part of that was that it w- there was an opportunity to see Mariner repeatedly get oh, fucked yeah. over. Yeah, she, like Mariner kept dealing with the bullshit. Normally, she's the one who's avoiding the bullshit mm-hmm. or causing the bullshit. Yeah, and there was like this ominous like doom music like through most of those scenes. <laughs> and, and picking up the stuff, it was like and she got, 
she got she got goo on her that like shot her to yeah. the ceiling, and we didn't find out later that she, what she was looking at was a Retruvian flask that re- yeah. and then, that releases a gelatinous spray, yeah, and, and that's what made, that, and, that and, and that's what made her. And then um, Boy, like yeah, Boimler knocked over the jar of nanobots that Billups didn't tighten, and, and <laughs> then the, oh yeah, and then the nanobots start eating Marin, 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 Mariner's hand, <laughs> and so yeah, she got <laughs> fucked up, and the, Rutherford got fucked up obviously by being all the big, engorgement, but, but Mariner, the molecular engorgement. You know, it's funny, yeah. Engorgement. You know, it's it's <laughs> funny because usually the pair is Rutherford, Tendy, Boimler, Marin. Mar- I keep wanting to say Marinara tonight for some reason. I don't know. Dude, what. it's okay to say that. But I mean, I <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to react to that. <laughs> no reaction. I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't going for that. <laughs> no it's, just, it's it's okay, space. man. It's a safe space. It's a safe space. Everyone's I cool. Didn't, you, I didn't. I wasn't going. For, wow. We I'm won't ridicule confused. your so misspoken diction. <gasps> Mama me. I was just saying, like, why can't I make my brain, my mouth, do the things my brain wants to do? And you were, but you were saying, like, don't worry about offending it's, people. It's and I was a, like, no, I'm not. So it confused me, and it was. It's it a made timeless. Weird. Question, but I didn't, question. I, didn't, I didn't think you were going to offend anyone saying marinara. I was just saying it's okay to say marinara. You didn't well, say as, like, it was as if I was going. You know, to, I was doing I something. Can marinara, marinara, I can appreciate. I can appreciate that. I was. I was more. What, Jesse? What'd you say? You didn't say it like marinara. <laughs> marinara, mayonnaise, mayonnaise, espresso, <laughs> espresso. People actually say that. Yeah, they do. I know someone who says that. My mom says that. <laughs> Now you know two people. <laughs> now I know two people. Um, yes, you were you were saying I was about engorgement of engorgement of, of the Mariner. Um, oh no, that no, Rutherford. The, the, the different groupings. It's oh yeah, Tendi the, and Rutherford versus Mariner and Boimler. Yeah, and this time out, it's both Mariner and Rutherford are all down on the anomaly collection. But Tendy's all excited mm-hmm. about it, and Boimler is excited. So it's yes. like they did a whole switcheroo of like what and, they're into. But again, it was, it was a Boimler connecting with Tendy episode. But again, it fits their character, and that's what I was talking about with the Boimler thing with with his whole thing. And it's the same here. I think Lower Decks has been doing a fantastic job of creating a characterization, right? Defining these characters through the exposition and the actions and all that other good stuff that you do on a TV show TV. and being consistent with it. And consistent doesn't mean they're always the same. Mm-hmm. Consistent still allows for growth. It's just that the growth should be related to their characterization, right? And so Boimler's growth is, is all about, you know, he's got this desire to be a captain one day, a Starfleet wonderkin kind of thing. He's not quite there. Um, but that's what he wants to do. So a lot of his stories are focused on g- giving him opportunities or, or giving him a flavor of what's, what what people think is going on in there. It, various different plots that allow him to better define his own personal vision of what it means for him to be successful. And he's always learning those lessons. And in this one, he learned... It, it, the lesson wasn't, oh, I should hang out with my friends. Yes, he would have preferred to hang out with his friends. But the lesson was that he, he that he learned to be his own person. That to, to he that leadership requires action, and he can do that. He can take action, and he doesn't have to take action mimicking some Starfleet mm-hmm. hero. Right. He can do it his own fucking way yeah. based on his experience. Yeah. But you right. see the same thing with Mariner, Tendi, and Rutherford. Like the way they react to the different things that happen to them. Are, makes sense. Rutherford is upset, but he's all like, right, what, what was the line, Jesse, that Rutherford said when he's all engorged? Oh, um, I'm big beyond belief. <laughs> right? That makes sense. <laughs> Mariner, some other stuff Mariner like, being <laughs> aggravated by, and, and the responses she has to like getting stabbed in the face with thorns and, and other and otherwise inconvenience. I my favorite with Mariner was when she was shocked by that mm. by oh, that Oh yeah shot clock. By that yeah shot like clock. some sort of like grandfather mini grandfather <laughs> yeah, alien weird. clock thing. And that's when she was the most sort of Disney or something animation mm. where her hair was all spiking up in yeah. her eyes. Yeah. And then she looked all bitter, almost, yeah. almost like a, uh, Elmer Fudd after he's gotten shot in the face. <laughs> or like, or like, <laughs> uh, yeah, that kind of, you kind of, you, you kind of, it was like blink, blink. You kind of came out rolling on that one. I was going to say like when, when the piano falls on their head and then their, yeah. teas, their teeth right. are like their teeth piano, piano keys, keys and then they all fall out <laughs> before playing a little tune. Yeah, the Warner Brothers style. But you said straight up shot in the face with a shot. Guns, well, because uh, you know it does happen. There's an episode. <laughs> it, does, it does happen. It does happen tonight. It happens tonight, tonight at ten oh. o'clock on the news. Oh, and then there's and an then... episode of Bugs Bunny with uh, Elmer Fudd and Daffy Duck that's really good. Yes, 
So anyway, Tendi finally Rabbit gets season. it because she gets yeah. eaten season. by that slug that all, is all like, Rah! yeah. <laughs> yes, and and there was a swallow. And there's a slug. It was a she was screaming slug. It was a screaming goose. Screaming slug. Yeah. And then like she comes out of its butt and like. The slug is screaming and Tendi is screaming. Yeah. And it was a dynamic anus. It just like appeared. Yeah, yeah, all of a sudden and like pulled her out. I mean, it was quite literally the dream. The and dream that we all have. Who else? Uh, yeah, dynamic uh, anus. Bo- dynamic Boimler anus, that has, is the dream. Boimler has gone through a couple of aliens, hasn't he, at this point? I feel at he least was, one. He was slurped on by one. that by the farmer, pig pig farmer people. Yeah. Alien. It was, it was or like early on. That scene with the slug was was funny, but it was also like when it, it was screaming, first of all, which is funny, but <laughs> you're like, then, oh my God. And, and then, then they hit it with something and, and they like, woo, and yeah, then it got all yeah, small. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he, when, he, when he was like, oh, it was like, oh, poor guy. And then it's like, but but good on that. They, it's still alive. They didn't kill it. It's still alive. No reason to kill it, because like, who, who wants to be sad by a little cute thing? Cute when monster. It got, when it got yeah. small, it made me think of uh, some people's reaction to uh, last week's episode uh, of the show, uh, uh, "A Fistful of Duplers" or whatever it's called. <laughs> 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 the embarrassment of Duplers. <laughs> uh, uh, that uh, a ship full of Duplers. No, I, I, I went on. I was looking on Reddit and. <laughs> And and somebody somebody was like, what I don't understand <laughs> is that the duplers can duplicate, but mass cannot be created from nothing. Oh no! So where is all that mass coming from? And oh, I didn't I didn't even so, read that conversation because I was like, okay, oh, that's man. cool. It's kind of awesome that you're having this conversation. I don't need to get I don't need uh, to get involved in this conversation. It's probably going to just make me angry. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I thought the same thing with the slug. I, I figured somebody's going to get on Reddit and be all like. Oh, how did the slug gain and then lose mass? Where did it get the mass from? God damn it. Well, but you don't question fucking Q, right? Like, exactly. You know, it's like, Star Trek. Yeah. It's Star Trek. Star Trek. Huh? Star Trek. Put a couple of stars it's and some star? spaceships and the kids will eat it all up. It's a trick. Eat it with a spoon. That's an old joke, but it's a good one. Hey, Willie. <laughs> put on a Star Trek. <laughs> Give me a bowl of cat. <laughs> Will ya? <laughs> uh, uh, given that that show, Alf, <laughs> Alien Life Form, was indeed about an alien life form, mm. we didn't see too much of him in space flying no. around. That was, you had to watch the cartoon for that. Because he crashed. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, he crashed. We saw his space. And then he couldn't get off the planet because he was a big old freeloader. And Yeah, he was a freeloader. And for all the alfing that was in the building, you didn't even really see his legs ever. You never saw him walk. A the only time you, times, you see on him the opening. on the opening. It's great when walking. he like, runs across. And it's, and Sometimes the he is, runs across. You see uh, Alf's legs, it's the most horrifying thing. <laughs> oh ever. my god. It's that turns it from a comedic alien sitcom to put, a Dark Skies X Files style. Did they put a show. they put a small person in a in a funny frizzy pants? Uh, probably they, they may ha- they may have. They may have, yeah, for that those particular scenes. Yeah. Was it was it just what was the guy's did they name? Just use Frank, the boy? Frank Musco, Fusco, John Fusco. Gordon Gordon Gordon, Fu- Gordon. Gordon. No, no, Gordon Shumway. Shumway. Gordon Shumway was his name. The character's yeah. name. Gordon Who are you talking about? Shumway. The 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 voice oh, oh. the voice of Alf, I think, was um Frank didn't, Musco. I, he's Cunst- still doing it. Susco, he Musco. Still doing? Didn't didn't, didn't that Alf Tesco? like didn't Alf Fusco sound no, Fusco someone else that's someone else that's like an E entertainment thing or something <laughs> E entertainment but um it, mm. didn't they do a couple like Tonight Show style episodes where Alf was the host didn't they do that a I think there times? was an Alf show in the early two thousands yeah. um, Paul Fusco Fusco where, where Paul was, Fusco well, I stand it was all like some kind of you know. Post Alf. Post Alf. <laughs> Post Alf era. Well, we'll get back to Star Trek now, but we will yeah, we will advise yeah, our audience yeah, to look yeah. up uh, what Alf. happened to Max Wright, who played Willie, who or played who played Willie if, Tanner. If you don't live in the United States, look up Alf. And oh, see they, what know that's Alf. All about. I, they know I, Alf. In the I, a lot of a lot of folks. I, I saw Alf in Europe translated into German. Fuck yeah, it was great. Start- Willie, <laughs> why are you sucking on that glass dick? Will <laughs> <laughs> that that see that's a joke that plays off of some real world events that happened uh, to Max Wright, the he fellow smoked crack who played and it was from Willie, and that was from New Jack City. That line was a play then, on yeah, a line from New Jack City. Uh, this is what we call we we take different aspects of culture and we recombine them in new ways, yeah. which then adds to the culture because that's what it's, we're doing right uh, now. Adding to the culture. That's did what I, that's what I, culture has been for the last thirty years. Did I just re 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 put stuff together? It's great. Did we spoil though the surprise about what happens to Willie? I don't think it really matters. It doesn't really matter. The fact that Max Wright was it's not a surprise caught smoking crack. No, because that's not even the best part. <laughs> oh yeah, that's yeah. There not, is more. To not it. even that's the most. Right. I should say the most interesting part. So yeah. look up Max Wright crack cocaine. 
and you'll get something right away. You'll, I mean, you'll learn some facts right away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maybe don't do it on your work laptop. No. Or it maybe is. do. Or maybe do, do. Do the do do. Come on, you know. It's a, have a little fun. Do the do do. Depends on where you work. Yes. I, it's a, that that some it would be research for some jobs. Uh. <laughs> it would be. It would be. Uh, okay. So the the B plot with the Tendy Mariner uh, Rutherford thing. Uh, again, like I said, I think the main thematic action is in the Boimler plot in terms of this sort of Star Trekky message thematic. Yeah, style totally. Yes. Uh, here, uh, the best message I could extract from this is uh, uh, listen to your friends a little bit cl- closer. You're talking it's about the Tendy plot. Yeah, it's sort yeah. of the, it's sort of the classic thing because both both Mariner and Rutherford. I mean, it's a, it's a good solid ending in that Mariner and Rutherford realize, you know what? We were being kind of dicks about this. Tendy was excited to do this. It would have made more sense for us to feed off of her enthusiasm. Maybe we wouldn't be as, as enthusiastic as she was, but we could still make fun of uh, what would otherwise be a boring chore. And meanwhile, Tendy, what she stated anyway, that she learned, I mean, they're pretty explicit about it, is that uh, she maybe shouldn't have volunteered the whole group against their will yeah, to do that was this fucked up. as an excuse to hang out. Tendy, we see her repeatedly go to somewhat extreme measures, and this is pretty low on the list of ranking of most extreme things she's done yeah. to get, well, the, get the group to well, hang so, out and, together. And so that's another th- thing about this plot is it, it does, it, it, it fits in with Tendy's character yeah. because she's super nice and super sweet and stuff, but she's when she gets pushed over the edge, she goes fucking ape shit. Happy to manipulate people, yeah, yeah, just yeah. like threaten their lives. And, and, and that's kind of like the joke, right? The person, you know, speaking of matter cannot be created or destroyed or whatever. You're talking about energies of like, um, and this is just some hocus pocus pop psychology bullshit I'm talking out of my ass with but it is really kind of that idea where if you put on the, if you're always happy all the time happy all the time it builds up so when you finally do freak you out you turn into a monster yeah and it, it builds up or, or you get so and bitter that you're being nice and, and everyone's being an of, asshole there's some kind of magical but, thing that's but, helping you do that but if you're if you're just constantly farting out like bad depressing vibes like you suck to be around but you're probably yeah. not going to go crazy because you're just broken down and yeah, I yeah, don't know yeah. and, and there's a they're, they're all the characters or at least these three characters are kind of at the extremes uh, mariner and, and and rutherford go into this effectively wanting to have a bad time they've declared it's going to be a bad time mm-hmm. and so they want it to be a bad time because psychologically that's their everything they do is going to be like in order to prove i'm right mm-hmm. i have to be miserable they've already done it tendy hasn't done it before yes and tendy's like tendy's like the audience because i mean we don't live in the in the future in a fantasy Star Trek world, and collecting that kind of shit looks really cool. Like, yeah, yeah, picking up like, funny like, crystals. Crazy, they're like, jaded. There's all kinds of wacky they're, shit they're, happening. I want a bunch of unlabeled crystals. A bunch of unlabeled crystals. These belong in a lab. Like when when they were like um, these belong in a museum. Yeah. So when <laughs> when when Rutherford was like, oh, they left the crystals lying around. You know, you should you're supposed to label them and put them in a lab or whatever. <laughs> um, and then Mariner goes ignoring protocol. That's one of the perks of being a commander. Do you yeah. think that's like a direct reference to like Riker or something like being. I think it's a direct reference to every, every single anybody with a captain. red shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they always just kind of like do what the fuck they want. Even Picard, yeah. Picard right? Yeah. Even Picard, uh, a different flavor, different style. But I mean, honestly, yeah. I mean, Cisco. So you don't think it was Cisco just murdered Cisco. people to start wars? Yeah. So it wasn't just a line they said, just like haha, like they were actually referring uh, yes, to the history. I, 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 I think so. I think to me that makes sense. It makes, I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. Cisco does some fucked up shit too. But, but. The, the the despite the fact that there wasn't a particularly strong sort of thematic story here who cares it was a good it was a good tale it was silly it was totally silly but in such a good way because it was creatively silly it was very lower decks you know they're just sort of reinforcing their deal how like the characters interact with each other it like hits home the main deal ha- about how they're best friends and mm-hmm. you know you have you have Boimler he's trying to impress people yeah. but he always comes back to the the gang you mean and- I- I guess that I guess that fits in with the a plot of like Boimler sort of being drawn away from them momentarily with these other people because it 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 shows what he's missing by not being there and it may look crazy and miserable but it's actually like you know and yeah. they're close they're close it just shows like you just said that there are close and, and, they and always the, end up being you know they're they're the best buds and it's like lower decks it's like you know the the the, the juxtaposition is there too between the the Boimler plot and the the B plot with with the Mariner Tendi and Rutherford in that 
he they're doing their own thing that's separate from what the red shits are doing and mm. Boimler. But Boimler can see that they're doing work, and that gets the idea yeah. in his head that you have to do things. You have to take action. Leadership yeah. is not about standing around putting on costumes and hanging out. Right. It's about doing things. And it's not even a, and I like that they made a point to, to note that it's not even about the fancy speeches yeah. because a lot of people, I guarantee you a lot of people in the audience would think that they say, Oh, you got the, the fancy speech. That's what you the, need. You need the this speech. Independence There's thing. even the scene where like they're, they each each of them start giving a fancy yes, speech and and everybody's exactly. like, "What do we well, do?" Yeah, first at first the people watching they got all, anime they, eyes. Yeah, they do. They look like inspired look like inspired ah, anime humanoids. Oh. And which actually, um, Casey got a little bit of that going when mm-hmm. he got to sit in that captain. Yeah. What is an acting captain, anyways? It's just all they mean is the somebody who it's fills like in, the con. who yeah. sits you on. You just the, got the con. So and, and it's when you and uh, it's particularly and I think in his case Pretty it was like he, he knew there was a period of time when the person who's on that shift was not going to be able to do it. So yeah. He Fuck to fuck it. It. just to sit in the chair um, where nothing else is going on but yeah so he even got at the that very little, end of the shift but, but yeah so at the beginning the people were all like yeah anime i was i was thinking the exact same thing anime eyes and then oh, and then as the second and third voices and they got more and more confused and overwhelmed because <laughs> yeah they, i love they did the whole like starfleet manual defines x as y you know the whole like dictionary <laughs> decide you know defines it was like, fantastic yeah. because it really put a button on that point and they even trick you a little bit trick you Sorry for saying oh, it like that. I said it weird. Trick you. It's trick you. Trick you. Trick you. Some sort of like a Stephen Fry trip setup. Tucker the Third. Uh, <laughs> Charles Trip Tucker the Third. They trick you a little bit in that they have that scene that I do want to talk about because there's there's a couple things to talk about. The speech making scene mm-hmm. with with uh, Boimler. So they you know, they dressed him up. They gave him a haircut. All that jazz. Funny gag. But it's the, like when Riker's doing that scene when he's acting. Like, yes. First of all, okay, okay, I, I I gotta talk about the fact that they're sitting in a black box theater. Yeah, they're sitting in like in in like a junior college black box theater, <laughs> and I couldn't figure out if this was a holodeck program they were running or if if they it's just so <laughs> if it's Cerritos's black box theater is that where like Jimmy Winston Bingston uh, Winger Jr. Bingston Winger Jr. pretends <laughs> to be planets Winger Bingston I like the he I, plays he, all he the plays, planets he's, no, I want to see that no 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 Jupiter. he, he yeah. plays all the yeah all the moons of Jupiter yeah moons of Jupiter so first of all there's that the, the black the, the, the black box theater okay so let's, let's I just want to briefly go through the alternatives of how we interpret this either the Cerritos just has a black box theater kitted out. That's the, that they just, it's available for people to book and they can go in there. And they or, can have conventions in there. Too. Or it's a holodeck program. Now, if it's a holodeck program and you're training somebody to give heroic speeches, why wouldn't you have them be on the bridge of the enterprise, whatever, uh, or on any ship? You'd think if they wanted to do a simulation, it would be more like when, when ransom was doing simulations with Rutherford, uh, the command simulations and Rutherford kept killing all the kill- kindergartners yeah. by accident. I'm trying to remember that one. You remember there Rutherford's trying out all the different jobs, like, like right, right. Yeah. Right, oh, right. Right at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And he keeps, he keeps not, <laughs> he's not very good at commands. So he just keeps, keeps killing everybody. So you were talking about the, the A and B plot, plot lopping over each other. So there's a lopping. Lop. Over. I, think, I, think he, I think you said dovetail. <laughs> Dove, whatever. Same. I did same say thing. dovetail. Um, when, when the, when <laughs> Which the, is both a, a, it's a, it's a cut in, 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 in joinery and it's a dovetail. Mm-hmm. It's a, it, it is also the tail of a dove. Yeah. Which I think is, is where the okay. phrase for the wood joinery comes from. Tell-y-mo. But I think the story the story Tell-y-mo. phrase might come from the wood joinery yep, yep. usage. So when language, right? Am I right? So when <laughs> they're yeah, right. language, right? So when they're walking down the room, you know, the suit the red shirt groups walking down the room right before they reach for, first of all, they're going walking down which room? They're, down the hallway? Down the a hallway. Okay, down and the- then behind behind them is there's that the corridor. The, that person who's the the corridor. <laughs> Not the Jeffries, not a tube. <laughs> I mean, hallways, right? corridor, but, hallway. It's a hallway. But like that, 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 um, the trill that was that went on a date with Rutherford. Mm-hmm. But uh, so there was someone next to her who had some kind of shaved side of his head with like a ponytail. It was like he was looking all hip. I was trying to figure out where he was from because uh, she was standing next to someone. Yeah, I didn't catch that yeah. character. I, I it's did not see important. that, but it didn't register. Yeah. Was, anyway, so they got they got past. Um, then they got up to the anomaly sorting group at that point, and I thought so. It was funny is there was this like tentacle monster that mariner was like casually closes the door on to chop <laughs> chop it all yes. up to pieces yeah. <laughs> she's just like and it's like all the tentacles just like fall off which is very it's similar chaos. it's very similar though though performed in a different tone than uh the bone tone than uh 
a recent episode of Riker's Mar- Bone Tone, Tone Bone. Marvel's What If with uh, Doctor Strange, oh, like their Doctor Strange oh, yeah. episode. I, watch that. I thought it was I thought it was funny when 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 when. <laughs> okay, when, <laughs> all right, Ga- G- Gacy. No, it wasn't Gacy. C- Casey. Casey. <laughs> John is John Casey. Wayne Casey. <laughs> yeah, when he goes. Uh, like uh that's after they give the speech and, and Boyman was like, What the fuck, man? And he's like, We're doing it, we're inspiring we're inspiring the crew. And he's like, We are the crew, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That kind of summed up that whole part. Yeah. Um but there was the um so the scene at the end, of course, when he's uh battling not really battling, but battling. approaching Tendi. First it was funny, he said, Is that Tendi? It's like this giant sc- screen yeah. scorpion. <laughs> it kind of looks like, is that Tendi? But um yeah, so he the the whole thing was obviously so at its heart uh, okay <laughs> it was very slapsticky obviously mm, it was yes. like pure slapstick yes. and on the Almost one three stooges level yeah and on the, here's why it works though is because you can just look at it and be like oh that was a slapstick bullshit it was the, that was the whole point it was aware yeah. that it was slapstick because the whole idea was to for boimler to humiliate himself yes. to show the red shirts that you need to like you go through some all sorts of shit to like do the right thing sometimes, you know? And so I takes thought work. Takes, takes work. Takes work to do the work. right thing. I like when the replicator like, and then after that, it like proceeds to, like the projectile vomits all over him. <sighs> yeah. That's when and, he orders. Um, he has an order there. Uh, it's uh computer, taffy, honey, shrimp, soda, corn, steak, chicken, nugget, crispy, lemon, rock, candy, chili, gravy, chocolate, Sunday, Hot. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That replicator made him his. He made him his his bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he made that made that jabroni humble. <laughs> yes. It yeah. was It was a. It was a cute and clever scene. And it's like totally Star Trek because you don't have to like kill the scorpion. You just make him laugh. Yeah. Make, make her laugh. Yeah. You, yeah, you don't have fun. to do any. It, it, it's, it, yeah. I, I agree. I, I like how he's, and it was sweet. It's, it's about breaking down like. It was breaking down her emotional armor because she had mm-hmm. worked herself into a frenzy. And in a frenzy, yeah. With the aid of a cube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was some kind of, what was it they thought? It was like a something sphere or cube or something. It was some kind of cube. cube. Mar- Mariner made some reference to spheres, but she's like, but, but this one's a cube. Yeah. And Boimler one's... knows about all that shit that they like had to deal with. He was like, oh yeah, that's one of those. Watch he, out for those. He, oh, he, yeah, read, he, he, read, those. he reads the, the, yeah. the, 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 the files on He reads things. He reads up on stuff. He's the nerd. Was... Mariner has a lot of info and experience because you know she she knows a lot because she's experienced a lot, but Boimler repeatedly knows the thing that you can only know if you read the bri- read, the manual the or yeah. the or the mission briefing, yeah. etc. He loves like those technical manuals for start for for all sorts of fantasy sci fi worlds. Yeah, technical uh, manuals. So um, I, I like to read those too. He, he, he also ordered a, a cake with uh, lit candles of various, various temperatures. Varying temperatures. Okay. <laughs> that was the thing that kind of <laughs> fucked with me the yeah. most in the episode. Like, Wait, what? <laughs> I did didn't understand the various temperatures thing. No, I, I, I understood it. I mean, I, I I appreciated where they were going. It's not that I didn't uh, it's get a, this it. It's a replicator joke, I think. Yeah, it but was, just, it was just bugging me out. But, but the replicator or not, they're still on fire. And, and that's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like the wick burns at a, at a right. boys, boys at a, the wick boins. It boins. It boins, it boins me. Temperature. This is my wine. Depending my on the diameter voice. of the candle. And the material in the wick. And the material in the woim. What, yeah, what, the, 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 what are the they trying to do? What are they going to do with all these wimes on the wicks? That? As the wim toins. The wine toins on the wicks for ricks. All right. Wait. So <laughs> there wasn't a worm at all. We're just we're just doing worm. Voices. We drifted into the worm voice. Uh, we drifted. Into she the was a worm scorpion. <laughs> A scorpion. A worm scorpion. What do you What do you mean? She was a scorpion. She was a worm scorpion. A worm scorpion. <laughs> oh, we forgot to mention. She's a riot. A wipian. We forgot to mention that Ensign Zinti. A I squirm. wish we would have gotten his name. We, we haven't gotten the, their their name yet. But firstly, the voice act, whoever the voice actor is, because I don't think I was able to is figure that the it cat? out. Yes, the Zinti is the, the is the alternative cat. Uh, the alternative cat. Yeah, because you've got Taana, who's a Cation, and the yeah, no, it just sounds like a funny, cat. funny title of yeah. something. It's like the alternative, alternative facts, it's except like a it's an alternative cat. Ears and a funny tale. It's like I'm the alternative cat. I hunt a, during the day, and darker, I like, and I don't color. like treats. Or so something. the the Zindi were on uh, the Star Trek the animated series, just as the Cations were, and they were, I think, in competition with each other or opposition. I, I can't quite remember, but. I think they weren't keen on each other. We've, we've just, just touched on that briefly because we've mentioned that we keep seeing the Zinti character. 
But what was even better was they had him do that weird Zinti arch because on the TAS, mm. the, the one of the main Zinti characters we meet basically is this fellow wearing the strange suit and he's all hunched over and arched over. Uh, and and when he's talking to Boimler about about his posture and he says, he, he says, you're all like this. And he hunches over exactly like that character on the animated uh, series. Ah, it's, it's worth a, yeah, do a Google search of the um, animated series to see that, um, which is a sort of a funny in joke. The other funny joke is that whereas most of these characters speak with fairly regular standard voices, maybe attenuated a bit if they're playing a Klingon or a, a, some other creature you expect to have a certain uh, tenor to their voice. This the Zinti character talks exactly like a filmation 1970s cartoon. He's a lot more like, hey, how's it going? Yeah. Uh, than you'd normally see on Lower Decks because most of the voices are, are just, just, just standard modern style voices. Wasn't there some guy, I was, maybe think of like um, Space Coast, Space Ghost yes, Coast the, to Coast. Uh, the Prey and Mantis. Brack. Voice. It's like Brack. Brack. Well, Brack is like the weird. Borax. Brack is like the weird cat looking monster thing, too, where he's got fangs. Oh, there's that one. But then there's then the there's Praying the Mantis. Praying Mantis fellow. Yeah. It's but they both had a similar time. Yeah. It's been such a long it's time. It's been such a long time. That's some old school shit. Yeah. 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 It's We're true. Old. Mm. We are old. Mm. You know, those pack lids, they must have rolled at like a 20 on Constitution or something, because that motherfucker uh, was like in space. Yeah. <laughs> Airlock shouldn't be that easy. Well, it's like they're all thick and shit. You know? Airlock shouldn't be that easy to access, but it seems to happen a lot in sci-fi where people sure. just... And just also, get, pack lids like, are good at this shit. They're and, good at jerry-rigging. And yeah, that's like, true. But, but it's, he's, they're good at jerry-rigging, but they're not good at figuring out it wasn't the bathroom. A Starfleet toilet probably doesn't <laughs> flush at all. There's no flush. So that's why like the dude was like, are you sure you were at the toilet? Like, not the air <laughs> Sonic toilet. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's not a... Yeah, there's some other something other than a flush, I'm sure. Play, the Sonic I, toilet just plays some loud music yeah. at your butt. Unless you're like a space whale or a crystalline entity, I don't think you can just... Gormigander? Like, I, I don't think... Gormigander? Gormigander? Or whatever. I don't think... Or a tardigrade or whatever. I don't think... Gormigander. I don't think thick skin is going to help you in space. Like, that's how it works, man. And like, how how is he going to breathe? You Maybe know? they don't need as much oxygen to the brain. He's because he's, so not, dumb. he's so mm. fucking dumb, dude. Anyways, Star um, Trek. Star Trek is a trek for stars. The I don't know what accent scene. I'm even doing there. I don't even know what I, I don't even. <laughs> that's how crazy I am. I don't even know what, what I'm is doing. this? Some kind of Star Trek? This Some isn't kinda... a friendship. It's a starship. That's my favorite line. Are you a star? I think that's my favorite line. Is that <laughs> that that line? It was so well delivered by <laughs> by Neil Casey really because he because <laughs> yeah and the music because he he like he turns to Boimler and so seriously. <laughs> this isn't friendship. This is a starship. Yeah. Are you a star? Yeah. Or not. Cool. <laughs> right? There's like a long pause after like, are you a star? And Boimler was just like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about, dude? You're, you're, you're basing your leadership, uh, uh, your leadership lessons off of turns of phrase. <laughs> yeah. And doing nothing in the process. I mean, that's kind of like the concept behind using puns as jokes it's not really you're not really doing anything other than reminding like people that words are sound like each other sometimes i love puns it's, it's, I'm, puns it's are great aggressive wordplay i'm puns. i'm a big fan of puns Some people i think do put it lowest on the ring of uh, of the ring of i think the they're very, of humor. those people I, are uh, are snobs I, think, I agree i think i think they're very punny yeah. Yeah. it makes me laugh because they're so punny it's, pretentious it's, it's, uh, it's the, but, yeah. but punny do you get what I'm doing? I totally fucking do. Yeah, I don't, but that's okay. We're gonna, you know, it's, we're it's, just gonna keep keep gonna moving. Keep it's punny as in podcast. funny. Funny as in punny. I don't think that's a pun. That's not it's a, a pun. pun. That's it's a, a pun. A, uh, that's like that's a, a slant rhyme. No, it's a no, pun. It's, it's not a, a pun. It's it, it's, not, it, a it's not a slant rhyme. rhyme. It's, it's a, a pun. It's like a globitism. No, it's a, it's a willful misuse. No, kind of, get, get, get the fuck <laughs> out of here. English language. Get the fuck out of here. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm just saying it's not a it's pun. A, the, the cube uh, was it's a criminal the, bending of the English. <laughs> the cube. <laughs> That's a philosophical. The shift. cube. <laughs> the cube was called the an ataxian mood shifter. Mm. Yeah, mood. Yeah. At first I thought they said moon, but it's mood, which makes more sense. Yeah, 
Yeah, it makes more I'm, sense. Well, I'm glad you caught that because I didn't. I, I, I missed it both times. I tried to listen I, for it, but I was so excited about the uh, transformation. Well, I had closed. Ca- I'm the second time I always watch with closed closed captioning, but um, and I'm, I'll get to that in just a second. All right. But um, I when Tendy started freaking out, you know, it, it took me by surprise for when when Mariner was like, "Whoa, slow to impulse." I yes, that was, that was another <laughs> one of like my favorite lines. Clever for slow, like, slow to impulse. <laughs> really clever. Hey, you know? Starfleet slang. It makes sense. Yeah. So um. Um, so that's red shirt so, slang. So the Packlids, they were offering uh, Freeman and Shaq's mush fruit. On closed, <laughs> wasn't it rotten mush fruit? Was it like a rotten mush fruit? And in closed captioning, it was spelled M U S H F O. Let me start over. It's spelled M U S H F R O O T. Yeah, like double O T. Like yeah, fruit loops. I saw that. Yeah, you see, I, fruit, I, I you watch it. You, I watch it sometimes. And, Closed and, captioning. And uh, I, I know some of our international friends may may or may not be familiar with Fruit Loops, fruit which loops. is a brand of cereal. Uh, in the United States, it's got a it's got a bird. It's on available it. a few that other places. More, I think sometimes that, it's called something different. That's, that, that makes more sense, Fruit Loops, because you're talking about loops, and so you want the fruit to look like the loop. Yeah. But like mush fruit, all it's saying is like they're kind of they're kind of dumb. Yeah, it's not moosh fruit. Yeah, it's not moosh fruit. <laughs> you're right, <laughs> mush fruit. Yeah. Moosh fruit. I'm a big fan of Fruit Loops. Uh, I'm okay, but I'm not I'm not a huge fan of cereal. I don't care about cereal. Sometimes I'll go through these kicks where I'm obsessed with cereal for kicks? like a week, and then I don't care about it. You go anymore. on kicks where you eat kicks. I order pumped up kicks. Cause I, fuck kicks, dude. I, I, I kicks is not that great. <laughs> at the, it sucks. At the, kicks was some bullshit. Well, okay. At the at the certain hey, kids buy kicks. At the at the it's nonsense, the H Mart. The H Mart. Now tricks on the other hand. H Mart. What kind of su- uh, uh, grocery store would you call H Mart? Korean. H- it it Korean. is a Korean focused grocery store. Okay, so but they I, sell a variety of other things as well. There you go. So I went in and I bought some kind of snacks. They had all these crazy snacks. Oh yeah. And I bought a bag of like salmon chips, Sk- yeah. salmon skins. Is they that were, what you salmon, sa- salmon skin jerky? Because that looked well, that looked bomb. Well, digging. it wasn't. It jer- wasn't jerky. It was more chippy stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. But it was good for like I could eat one or two oh, at three a time. Chips. <laughs> I could eat like one or two, and then I was like, okay, I'm done for today on that. They got there. I couldn't finish the bag. They were good, but they were a little much. It, yeah, and, it was but, a, and this relates to intense. cereal because one of the snacks I ordered was was a was a snacky snack that like a dried poppy snack where you pop the like a like a puff puff, puff snack. It was and when a puff you snack. once you pop, you can't stop. Yeah. That's well, why I was thinking of that. You right. And then this relates back to crumbled, Star Trek. Have you crumbled the, uh, <laughs> the salmon skin <laughs> chips over the, the, puff, the puff snacks and you can make yeah, a you nice little, combine that little mix? I like doing it better with a pork crackling um, shake. But, oh, um, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. But um, because it tasted like kicks. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah. yeah. That was a long way to go for that. It's a long thing. way to, t- to it Tipperary. It like dicks. It's a long way to Tipperary. Did you know that? I've heard that. I mean, granted. I, I imagine that is relative to your starting position. Yeah. If we, you're in North America, it's a super long way. It's a real Tipperary. long way from where we're sitting to Tipperary. Going from there to here? Where you're listening, it may you be... You can't get th- there from It here. may still be a long way relative to where you're sitting, but not, not as long as from going us. from Going from there to here... It's been a long way. Yes, it's it's been a long it's a long way to Tiberi. That's what I'm. That's it's what been I'm a saying. long way getting from there to here. The yeah. secret is if, in the sauce. If 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 I had traveled from Washington D.C. to Tipperary, upon arrival, you I would a, say a it's been a long road getting from there to here. Because there's not a road. Because it's Tipperary. a long way to Tipperary. <laughs> There's no road from here to. Well, Tipperary. and there's no road. It would be a metaphorical road that would but combine all the various but, but, modes of yeah. transport there's, there's, on the way to Tipperary. Exactly. There's no sleep. No I, sleep till I Brooklyn. Bet I bet the. <sighs> I heard that. <laughs> no sleep till Brooklyn. <laughs> okay. Her mushesty. They called her her mushesty. Yeah, I said that a bunch. Oh, so did we, you? I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> Were you just like saying sprinkling it in throughout the movie? Yeah, yeah. That's probably why I don't remember it because it's like. <laughs> Just, just sprinkle just in Jersey. words. Like, when you listen back to the, if you, I don't listen to it, but if you mm. listen to it, you Jesse's know. just gonna, ro- he's just rocking back and forth, saying my, her, her, my <laughs> her uh, There are six mentions of Riker in this episode. Six mentions of Riker and a lot of, uh, uh, as you, as with the mushish tree, etc. We learn more about pack led culture, not necessarily in. Uh, detail or history but or anything we, like that, but we get more the contours of it a little the bit. The planet's more. chaotic in terms of its uh, culture and 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 how political it's all kind hierarchy. Of or yeah. their, 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 and they, their they, government, their, their government, their government, their government is based off of uh, determining uh, social significance and the big attached helmets. power based on helmet size. Yeah, because I guess that implies oh he has a big head, he must be smart. But we must be careful to note 
that if our and the rest of the Internet's predictions turn out to be true and that the Packlet have for some time been being led by mm-hmm. some, somebody or some group external to them. The Pac-Man. Then we don't He's know for Pac-Man. sure how much that has affected their society. Maybe their society was different, right? So we would have to allow for that fact that perhaps their society was organized not by helmets oh, in the yeah. past, but maybe by uh, some other object. Dark helmets. Or <laughs> dark helmet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a Peruvian star. I want to know Spa- more about this. Space balls. Do you think we'll hear more about this Veruvian bomb thing? Like how they're yes. trying to. Uh, I expect so. It could be that. It's you think just that's re- like a world blow up bomb or just a, like a minor fuck you up bomb? I'm very curious because it could go a few ways. I, it wouldn't surprise me for lower decks to be like, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna do some real fucked up shit. Uh, but probably not. Maybe, but I'm guessing it'll come back. It could be one of those things where Freeman gets some bonus points for reporting it and it and it's it's a resolved thing off screen. But I don't know. It seems to me that in these last few episodes heading into the season finale, they're gonna be wanting to build up the tension of this side plot and to build up the tension, you need to raise the stakes somehow. This bomb could be part of it, or at least part of the journey to getting to where the stakes are raised, and presumably if, at some point the big bad behind the scenes is revealed. So it'd be funny if it, they did continue with this Peruvian bomb thing, because you think, in terms of creating a story, I don't know much about it, but it, it's like you have reasons why things happen, right? And so here's the thing. It's like, okay, they're planning to bomb Earth. Maybe you have reasons why things happen. Well, just... Uh, so they, <laughs> Why do bad things happen to good people? I mean, I'm not saying like that. I'm just saying like, you know, A goes to B goes to C. You're speaking in a literary oh, sense. Oh, I see. Yeah. In a literary so, sense. So when you're talking about the idea of how is Starfleet going to find out about this bomb on Earth? You could go different directions. You could go You could go into some whole side thing where, where Picard wears like the ninja outfit and like goes, you know, <laughs> on the planet all no, black. You, I, I, you really love Picard dressed as a ninja. Yeah, it's awesome. You bring you it could, up often. Yeah, yeah, it's great. We haven't even discussed it's that particular cool. episode. It's, it's, it's awesome. So, you know, you could do like that's some, some, kind, some that kind of lights. sneaky stealth action or you can do through some political intrigue. And they're like, well, we're just going to skip all that about how they found out. They found out like this. And it's not some random shit. It fits with the character yeah. of pa- Packlids. It like goes along with it. Mm. So it's interesting the choices you must have to make, I guess, as a writer when you're trying to figure out why something happened. And you want to make a big thing out of it or you just want to make it cleverly sort of sneak into the into the stuff so i don't know i just um just just i think about things you know <laughs> yeah you know. what you gotta understand you about got, me is i really thoughts. i really like to think you know There's not thoughts. everyone's down with that Marinara. sometimes you Marin- just can't think marinara sauce um yeah when when they said um you just beat captain janeway you know i know it wasn't yeah. i don't think it was a joke that was meant to be anything other than what they said but 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 like they just I was kept thinking, calling her Jane. Yeah, I thought they established that she wasn't Janeway in like a few lines before. Well, she she first corrected them, said she's Captain yeah. Freeman. Yeah, and they kept calling her Janeway, and then they heard that she wasn't Janeway, and then got mad at that. But then <laughs> clearly forgot it. Yeah, they, yeah. ten, they ten seconds second. later. Yeah, I was thinking if they hadn't forgot it, maybe like what they thought is like discovering that she wasn't Janeway so was somehow beating Janeway. Maybe it's that direction. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> You're giving those back middle yeah, a lot of credit. No, I know, I know. I was thinking, but I was thinking like, <laughs> like what if that it, scene with the ransom was like, maybe we under, underestimated that. <laughs> and they see <laughs> float through the, through the window. You know, you, you, know, you, know, you know what I'm saying though? Like, it's like, instead of just being like, they forgot, it's like, oh, we know you're not Janeway. We beat Janeway because we discovered that you're Freeman. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was like that, but I don't think it was like that. No, they're they're a bunch of dummies, a bunch of boneheads. <laughs> Unlike a Riker, who's a legitimate bonehead in a good way. He's a he's oh, because he's a trombone. Head. Trombone, yeah. yeah. And you played trombone. He blows something. I brass. played trombone. Dan is a you play tr- you played trombone. He's an excellent trombone. You played player. trombone. It's been years. Yeah, I quote Briefly. unquote played trombone. Briefly, Dan played trombone. He, he, he mastered trombone like a proper musician. Man, if I pushing put, it in and out and doing all the toots and it's been, spit valves and all that, your all son, that jazz. your son is is playing trumpet. Yeah, my trumpet. my father and grandfather played trumpet. Yeah, as it's well. awesome. Right. It's totally awesome. Jesse, do you think if you so is, it, I'm, question about amateur real quick and like instruments? Okay, just real quick sidebar on amateur. On amateur, um, would you like to define amateur for the <coughs> n- audience? 
It's that that shit you do with your mouth to make the, the duck noise. quack sound to yeah. make to make a noise on any sort of wind instrument. So on a on a trombone, if I picked up a trombone right now and played for any longer than ten minutes, my lips would go numb because oh, it's been so fucking yeah, long. Yeah, brass is really hard. Like, that. like you get used yeah. to it, but if if you haven't picked up in a while, you just your shit's all numb. That's clarinet, why Riker constantly practices. Oh yeah, yeah I can why, pick up a, I can pick up a clarinet and just go like yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, Riker does not, and it doesn't it doesn't sound like the best, but it I can it's passable. It doesn't like, fuck you up with brass even. Even if you're playing every day, you still have to like warm up every day, like mm-hmm. in and a that's crazy why way. Riker's constantly boning on his cleaning, bone. yeah. cleaning his bone yeah. because he needs to keep his lips from getting floppy. Yep. You don't want them lips from getting floppy. I know you boys like them <laughs> floppy. <laughs> Lady, you're scaring us. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Quoting fucking Adam Sandler. <clears throat> Billy Madison in that case, Greg. Yeah, that was Billy Madison. Billy Madison. Good movie. All right, so... It's got any, odds. Anything else, or should we move along to odds and ends before we slowly <laughs> wrap like, up the episode? Uh, I like the Three Pigs book. Oh, yes. And Miggly Moo. I love the... Dr. Miggly Moo's office was awesome. I love that we weren't clear even after what happened whether or not it were, there were anomalies or if he just had a pile of shit yeah. Yeah. because he's a bird yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a bird dude oh, yeah, he's that's a, a good point. he's just like nesting he just has like a pile of shit I was gonna say like he seemed a little hoardy about his shit but that makes a boy. that makes more sense because he's a boy he's not a wine he gets the wine there was like a boy, sponge and boy like gets the wine there. there was a there was some goggles a broken sword there was a magic a magic magic book on three little pigs there was a stuffed bunny there was some just like like sponge look and i i bet you roller shit i I, and 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 i have to oh there was a medium-sized tiny tree i it's a bonsai tree no it's not a bonsai tree because bonsais are smaller i think that's why i I said a medium-sized tiny tree it's one of those other it's not bonsai but it's it's also a japanese i don't speak Mm -hmm. with authority so I don't know for sure. Jesse thinks it's a different. I thought thing. that bonsai was a style, but that could be scaled up or down to some degree. I mean, I, I could be wrong about that. There may be a different term about that. Maybe it's there like is contact us, the contact details. us, and set us straight. I know we 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 have a good number of listeners in Japan. Uh, as well as Ooh, that would be helpful, other yeah. areas yeah. of the Eastern Hemisphere. Well, we would love to hear what we get wrong or what we omit. Set us well, maybe it's like a calico cat or a tortoise shell cat where it's not actually a breed of cat. It's just their their genetics make right. just make it's their like you shit say all different. It's calling somebody a ginger. Which 1980s mm, television character yeah. do you think was most fond of cats? 19 what? 1980s. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> what do you think, Willie? <laughs> The guy on Inspector Gadget. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Claw. Dr. Claw. Oh, yeah. I was always like, or... oh, we didn't get to see him this week. I thought we were going to see Dr. Claw this week. Mm. Okay. Odds and ends. Any other odds and ends? Um, well, M- you talked about Midley Moo's office. Oh, yeah. Uh, the pigs. Uh, the pigs horrified me. And that was yeah. so great. They were almost like uh, anyone who's seen uh, Hayao Miyazaki's Spirited Away. There's uh, a... Yeah. There's a there's something involving With the pigs. pigs in there that's pretty yeah. pretty horrifying and it's it, yeah. it was they were the pigs were animated very similar mm-hmm. to that yeah, Gro- they, they were, were grotesque and violent and upsetting it was a fun time yeah I like that uh, what is it Kiki's delivery service oh Kiki's delivery service that was that's a good that's one amazing yeah. um you were talking about the Boimler speech practice he was giving i like that it was like it was like a whose line is it anyway or like you know theater sports or whatever you yeah. improv games were the what he ended up talking about was a temporal rift with the plasma grid <laughs> oh and the replicators <laughs> the are replicators broken <laughs> <don't work. laughs> so. and on a on a brilliantly done recreation <laughs> of, the, <laughs> of, the, of the enterprise oh. d bridge yeah <laughs> brilliantly done (laughs) please Eddie (laughs) Roger Rabbit there's a Tal Shiar reference yeah oh yeah this is not the Tal Shiar Tal Shiar yeah it was a good Tal Shiar you know they continue their record of having great little no there wasn't any Kuat Malat no Kuat Malat when before Rutherford got all big and engorged I think you'd get Kuat Malat on the replicator I think I got Kuat Malat the other day I'm still recovering (laughs) Ah. I, think I ate some weird, some weird. Because of all that soda you're buying at Haver. the, at the I had Haver as a kid. Yeah, all the monster. Con- it's because I don't drink Bang anymore. Because they don't have it on sale at Seven Eleven anymore. Um, when before Rut- Rutherford got all engorged, he was he described like 
he told them to be careful with whatever it was. It was like a skull because he said it's from the planet where everything evolved all weird. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm wondering if that was a reference to anything or if it was just kind of like know, I, I couldn't I couldn't immediately place it. I assume it's something that maybe I'm missing missing something there because almost everything is a reference yeah. in, in one way or the other. Yeah. And I was going to say earlier that in Miggly Moo's office, uh, I. I, I didn't make a lot of immediate connections and I didn't have time to, to, to look at the internet conversation, but I expect that that broken sword and everything, but probably all of that yeah. is a reference to something, including the bunny. Well, I look forward to learning more. You know, broken sword, that was in um, Lotor. Lord of the Rings. And it was also in the, that, that pirate... The Shards of Narsal. That, that Pirates of Dark Water. Do you yeah, remember that cartoon? That's, he, right. he, that's what that was. Yeah, he fought with a broken I, I sword. There was something. A, yeah. a, a brilliantly like, animated and performed uh, that was um, a crazy cartoon show, yeah. that failed because it was just like too expensive. It was too quality. Yeah. I don't, it couldn't make I don't any money because it was so one. good. What it was, era so was like that a, one? It was like early 90s yeah late 80s. Well, it was like 90 gar- like 91 90. 90 or 91 or something it was like, like so that. Gar- gargoyles such time. A, like an original I idea think gargoyles was after that yeah I would it was think. after gargoyles that. was mid 90s what was gargoyles after tng were overlapping something like because that. i know they're a couple voices the it was pre uh, they have a I'm, lot i'm of pretty TNG sure this was yeah. pre like batman tons of star trek people have been on gargoyles there yeah. are some some of the that was a good show. Some of the main characters on Gargoyles were yeah. Star Trek people, but then there it, were lots of guest it, characters. It was just a cool show, like it was Gargoyles. It was it's cool. like, and it's horror. available, I think, on Disney Plus. Oh no shit! Those who would I like know. To so if you you don't have to be on Paramount Plus, you all gotta the time, get the Disney Plus. You can go over to the old Disney Plus. So I like when it's got the Mandalorian. I, I like when the the pack lid, like he like took a picture of of space through the through the window. Took a picture of his face. with a flash, which with means he, flash. Won't, he won't see anything. Yeah, and he blinded himself, but he was like he kept laughing and smiling. Like, <laughs> Nothing was happening. But then he asked, like, uh, what a crimson force field was. What is a crimson force field? Have we heard of such a thing? Never heard of it. We never heard of a crimson force field. Can I have your codes now? Yeah. He's like, get out of here. (laughs) Whatever. What did he say after that? He was like, uh, get him out of here. Yeah, he laughs. Ransom laughs and says, get him out of here. Then they go, die. They cut to Janeway, die. Janeway, die. Janeway, die. Janeway, die. And then Rumdar returns. Hi, everybody. Uh, the end bit with Armas was, yeah. yes, that was wonderful. Yeah, I know. So, I really it was wonderful I love so it. many ways. I love like Armas, he, you look like he was all sad and lonely, but really he's sad because he has nobody left to torture because yes. he killed them all. Exactly. <laughs> and, just and he's just kind of bored. <laughs> and, and the, the whole, first of all, the concept was, it was silly, but it was cool. We can prank call a planet. It was sub manifold casting stone. So they... <laughs> So they decide it's like some fantasy shit. They decide to, <laughs> to prank call Armas, who killed uh, oh, Tasha Yar. Yeah, they were making light of that Spoilers. whole Tasha. They were making light of that whole Tasha Yar situation. That was the oil slick that killed. Yes, Tasha. the yeah. skin of evil in the episode, the titular skin of evil. Skin of, kind of fucked up? Skin of evil. Isn't kind of fucked up? We're just like throwing Yar aside, just laughing at yeah, her. She's been dead a while at this yeah, stage. You know? been... It was like the first season. Or yeah, something. yeah, and. Uh, so they, they that that's already funny the concept. Then the execution. So first of all, uh, Fred Tatiscore. Oh yeah, who plays Shax? Yeah. He also he does a lot of the other voices and he does the he does the voice of Armas. Yeah. Arnis. The set. The set. Mm. The animated set. <laughs> yeah, animated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really feel like I should break out into song right now. The animated suck. <laughs> the set. A paradox, a paradox, the, the most ingenious, ingenious paradox. paradox. <laughs> <laughs> a pair of socks. I am the very muddle of a mutter major general. Two different musicals. I, I know they're two different mix, m- musicals. I know they're two What's different What's the pair musicals. of socks? That's Pirates of Penzance. Oh, Pirates of Penzance. Snap. Yeah. Right. You guys are hip. I never actually saw H. <laughs> <laughs> yep, HMS Pinafore and so HMS Pinafore. I've never seen HMS the Pinafore. Of, they are separate, but they are of a piece. But Pirates of Penzance is fun. They are both fun. Mm-hmm. All right. So, <laughs> so, um, getting back to my point, the uh, animated set. The animated set, and by animated set, I'm not referring to an animated version of the God Set from Egyptian no, folklore. You, I, <laughs> You've been playing too much Age of Empire or Age of Anthology. <laughs> that I have. And I only play it when I'm stressed and oh. nearing depression. No, I'm kidding. Uh, well, it's true. It brings but, you back to college. Yeah. Um, it's not It's not set from Egypt mythology. The animated set 
so perfectly replicated mm-hmm. the set for Armas. Yeah. Uh, like it really, they, they had like a, a, a goofy looking styrofoam mm-hmm. looking rock in the yeah, right place and yeah, everything. It was, yeah. it was all there. That was great. And then they, then they, then they, then they start their prank call. <laughs> it starts with a whole bunch of like giggling in the background. <laughs> and, sh- and hey, shut up! Hey, shut up! It's connected. Hey, shut up! It's connected. <laughs> Mariner just being like, you look like a bag of crap. <laughs> and then, what was it? A tendy? It was a tendy. You go. Tendy has the gr- be- the punchline. Yeah, yeah, the punchline. Right. Uh, 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 I forget exactly what it was. You know, it was. Like, blah, blah. We're, we're touching your stuff. Uh, yeah, it was. He was. We're touching your stuff. Which is then, funny because. Which is funny because he's like, like what stuff? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. what stuff? Yeah. But he was like, but then he starts screaming. He's like, I am a skin of evil. Yeah. And then Tendy says, more like a puddle of shit. Yeah. <laughs> And he all like splatters on like the yeah. shore. It, I was, I was it, thinking, it, it, I was thinking like, and the idea if he had stuff to touch that would kill you because yes. that's. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's it's just that 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 they they've done this before. This is not new, but on, on the one hand, you have T- Doctor Taana who is vulgar all the time. That's part of her character, yeah. and it's funny, but it's funny because she's so aggressively vulgar. But with Tendi, she's so sweet and so nice. Most of the time, but then she can turn into a monster scorpion or she can call somebody a, a, a puddle of shit. Yeah. Um, and it works. It just works. It's funny. It's hilarious. It's sweet. It's all these things all at once. And it's and it's nostalgic because it's Ar- Armis. And it's um, it's in some ways you could say it's taking away some of the, like you normally you see Armis and you're like, oh, man, yeah. that, oh, the skin of evil is all fucked up. And Tasha Yar got all slurped down and. Oh man, that was a wicked, that was a wicked, crazy episode. Oh man! But now there's like a new memory file in there where there's also this humorous, um, you, you know, making making fun of Armis and aggravating him <laughs> and and giving him a hard time about his stuff. Oh, so right before that, actually, there were t- uh, there was the um the Packlid. Yeah, when Shax goes to uh, Casey, he's like the Packlid did something unspeakable in there, referring to the big dump he took in the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the thing. And but, Casey's got to clean it up. Yeah, and then for some reason, it, I can't remember the context here exactly of like how it looks and like that scene looks. But Tendy goes, it cuts to like Tendy, and she's like. Ooh, and then he deflated back into regular sized Rutherford. Oh, she must have been telling the yeah, story yeah, yeah. to Boimler. She Boyle. was telling the story to Boimler. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what, that's what it was. Doing. And she was talking about regular sized Rutherford, and all I could think of is can you guess? Is uh, regular sized Rudy? Yeah, regular yeah. sized <laughs> regular yeah. size Rudy from Bob's Burgers. Who, was, because who? there's like a. Is there like a. There's a smaller Rudy there's or is there a small, bigger there's, Rudy? There's, there's a smaller Rudy okay. for sure. Yeah, there's a yeah, there's a small Rudy. Rudy. They refer to him once for sure. Right. Yeah. It's like once. And Rudy kind of fills in some ways a Bobby Hill. Yeah, yeah, he's got like a Bobby Hill haircut. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah he does. Sort of like every yeah. day, he's so he's so. You know, with the um the guy who plays the not not the head food inspector, but his pal. Yeah, he looks like Beavis. Ron, Ron he looks Ron, like he's yeah, he got Beavis little, hair. He does yeah, have a little bit of Beavis and a little bit of uh, uh, the the clown fella from The Simpsons hair. Um, crusty, crusty. Yeah, not. I mean, it's not spiky, but you know. It's not spiky. Yeah, yeah. It's not a spiky hair. I'm not a spiky hair clown. I'm not a spiky hair clown. All right. Um, uh, speaking of body types, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's no, there's no good way to get entered and bring have, up the subject. I, I'm not, I'm not going to look to confirm, but I'm betting in in Dan's notes. He has a note that says, "Find some way to segue." To <laughs> speaking about body, body types. types, yeah, I know. There's no an elegant way. Elegant indeed. <laughs> Um, and I, I, and I don't mean this in a weird, creepy way, but it's in- okay. Okay, it's interesting that I was looking at. Rutherford in one episode, and then I was looking at Tendi in the, at the end of this one, mm-hmm. and both of them have very interesting body shapes. They're they're not like they put an effort into making because most of the time they don't put a lot of effort into d- having people uh, cartoons. A lot of times the cartoons body shapes are they're all just kind of the same. even in like Disney movies. Are you talking like this because you don't want to get us canceled? I'm not. No, well, I'm not. They, they both, uh, they <laughs> what both, do you want me to say? I'm just trying to. They both got big, it. and and their their clothes got stretched out, and they got they returned no, to regular no. size. So you got to see them in like ripped, no, no, ripped clothes. No, no, that's not at all what I'm talking. I mean, I was gonna, Rip, you're I, talking. You're making it sexy. I'm talking. I about, mean, I was gonna. I was gonna admit that I, you're talking I, I feel about like an asshole, types, but I, I, the Incredible Hulk torn clothes thing on Tendi. It was. I enjoyed it's, that. That's not. That's not the scene. I was. Oh, you're talking about that scene. I wasn't talking about that scene. What I mean is, okay, think of a Disney movie and think of all the, like, the male... The Fox and the Hound. Just think of, like, a movie like Beauty and the Beast or something that's not the Beast. You think of the male characters. They all kind of look the same 
like in their bot, their physic physically right, they look the same, but their right. face is what's distinguishing. Same with the women have a similar thing going on in in a lot of cartoons is they don't yeah. put a lot of effort into making distinct body shapes. And if you oh, look at Tendi and you look at Rutherford, they body have shape. distinct body shapes that they I actually mean, put effort into doing yeah. that. And I think that's yeah. interesting. I yeah. I think you're you're right. There's a good observation, and and I I can think of a, a few other examples of uh, particularly background characters where lower deck shows. Uh, at least somewhat more variety in body types than you might normally see on a, a live action Hollywood production because of all the sort of standard prejudices that go into mm -hmm. making a Hollywood show. So I, it's I, atrocious. It's another, it's another mm. avenue for um, uh, uh, presenting diversity I mean. as, as normal, right? Because that's, that's kind of the key, right? And that's where something Star Trek doesn't always get right. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it was like, Oh, diversity, but it's uh, sometimes it's like, okay, you don't have to keep saying it. Yeah. The point, is, not right, America, the point, the point is in the future. This is not a thing. America sucks. <laughs> If you're not from America, just, just so you know. <laughs> um, okay, any other odds and ends? Or, or um, what? Well, what's the deal here? Uh, I've used up all mine. I got it. I got it all. I, Jesse's I got all his out. I mean, the red, oh, he's watching Dan just pour over I thought, his nuts. I, I really liked this episode. It was like just a very Lower Decks episode. Yes. It like sort of hit all the stuff they're trying to hit. It was it was cute. It was, it was funny. Cute. You took advantage of the animation format. Yeah. Uh, took advantage of uh, having access to Rich Fulcher. Yeah. Good Rich Fulcher exposure. They need to have a Matt Berry cameo. I agree. Baz Minty, when he pulled back the you veil. Mentioned, you mentioned that. I know, but I was I just realized that sounds kind of like Basmati. Yeah, it is. The rice. I like it's making Basmati. Me hungry. Rice. What do they call? What is it? What, what do they call? What do they call? What does Troy call Riker? Her, 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 her what? Her min, <laughs> her, her min, min zong. Ja Jasmati. Her, her shins on. Jasmati. Is, is Riker her shins on? <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> you know it's her imzati. You know for goddamn well it's not her shins on. <laughs> I always hated the name shins on because it's like, come on, what is a? Sh it's a, it's it makes me think of shins. Like shin splints, yeah. or shin guards, shins on, and that's shins a shins on, on like shins off, on. and that's it's a, like a thing you rub on your shin if your shin gets hurt. And it's a very slight version of Tom Hardy, as opposed to Bane Tom Hardy. Isn't yeah. it Tom Hardy? It is Tom Hardy. Yeah. Early Tom Hardy. Yeah, early. Right. Yeah, shins on your shins on fire. That sucks. Shins on my shins on fire. All right. What the fuck are you talking about? Really? <laughs> 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 okay. No. Uh, uh, la la last call for odds and ends. Otherwise, no, uh, we'll, no, I I'm, guess I'm that's it, bro. Okay, we'll we'll wrap things feedback. up. Feedback. Yeah, feedback. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse's ready. Jesse Jesse wants to go to Taco Bell. <laughs> we were promised Taco Bell at the end of the. Uh, so oh, uh, oh, I wanted to say that Boiler boy, Boiler boy, <laughs> Boiler when he was giving practicing a speech, the first speech said Bookman. and uh, lots of danger. But as sure as uh, this is my captain's chair, um, you can count on me because I'm your captain. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I thought it rhymed. I guess it didn't it rhyme. It did rhyme. You can count on me. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Yes, you can count on me. Yes, sir. Yeah, just it did rhyme. I was focusing bit. on chair. It didn't rhyme. <laughs> Suri doesn't rhyme with chair. <laughs> It's, you're, it's you were staring at his chair because he was sitting in a chair. <laughs> nice you're chair. Just, you're just obsessed. It's just it like, look, there's a chair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So um, I'm not sorry. I'm 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 proud. The traditional uh, con concluding podcast statements that you're all familiar with from from a variety of podcasts. Two well, words. Bravo. You should. <laughs> what you should do? We should. We. What you should do is you should say each word. Like write down what you say at the end, and just say each word over and over again, like a hundred times a piece. And then you throw it into some software that ra that splices them together, so it's the same message each time, but it sounds slightly different, so it doesn't sound like it's canned. You do know you, what I'm do saying? You have, are you going to make this software for me? I suppose I could, but are like, do, are you going to do it in Python? <sighs> That's a good. I guess Python's got some yeah. good libraries. You know, Python would probably be the language to do it in. That's what I'm thinking. That's okay. what they use for stuff. All right, let's, let's, we'll get to, we'll, we'll, let's get to the bit though. In the, in the bit, the bit at the end. I thought this was the bit. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're trying to. We're, 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 that's I keep we're fucking it middle, up. I thought you were doing a bit. I thought oh. you were doing a bit. Yeah, that's right. We were. Traditional emails can be forwarded yeah, okay. to. Uh, dub 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 feedback at it's got star trek w, 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 w. the emails go to feedback at it's got star trek.com if you are inclined to send an email 
Uh, if you would like to go to the website, uh, upon, upon which you will discover a variety of features like sorting the podcasts via sorting the TV the series the and TV all that other series. stuff. Um, you go to www. It's got Star Trek. W. If, however, you are keen for some vibrant, Wubble, yeah. vigorous, occasionally aggressive interaction, uh, you can go meet us on social media, particularly on Twitter. Twitter. At it's got Star Trek. I uh, tweet us. Instagram at it's got Star Trek. Uh, Facebook. I, I think you can do at it's got Star Trek or just type it in. You'll find us. We got a whole page on there. On it, it can't be that hard. You can click the little follow button. Uh, YouTube. It's, it, it's the internet. People are digging the YouTube. People dig watching. People are digging pe- that people, shit. People like listening to a podcast through their TV. It's called multimedia. Who would have known? They go clickety click. We don't, we don't have video of us. We're, we, we just have a static image. We love a world of multimedia. And the podcast. <laughs> But anyway, it's multiple a, media increasing well, in popularity. You, Why don't you, you join the rest of your friends? Clickety click. I mean, haven't you ever gone to an art museum and like looked at art on the wall? That's like what this is. You're just looking at a still image. That's yeah, man. That's it's where, art. That's where it's at. It's yeah. art. What we do is art. I mean, I'm not gonna. Arthur. I'm not gonna disagree with that. Mm-hmm. I'm not entirely sure about the analogy, but whatever. You can go. <laughs> start, you can it, look at art. It's got Star Trek. You're Mister. That's not on, a pun. That's on, not an analogy. YouTube. That's yes, not what you're saying. Is not what you think you're saying. I'm Mister Standards. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Captain Standards. <laughs> Captain Standards. Uh, loose Standards, <laughs> grant you, but you know, there's a couple of them. Captain there. Loose Standards. All right, YouTube is a good one. Okay. Uh, flapper, you're a flapper. I don't know. We're everywhere. We're all over the thing. Just type in it's got started. It's not hard to find. All over, we're all over the thing. All the Lieutenant Apple Command podcasts and the Spotify. You might even see a clip on Reddit or something. Reddit, yeah. It's a Reddit. You can find dig around on Reddit. Uh, Did you say type. dick around on Reddit? Oh, I said dig around. Oh. I mean, I guess mostly people dick around on Reddit, but oh. I meant dig around, like as if as if you were rooting around for rooting something. around Routine. through Doctor Migley Moose bird nest of crap <laughs> yeah precisely or mr migley moo doctor. 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 doctor he's a doctor he's a counselor but uh, all right so uh this will be the concluding part of this week's episode yeah, this is the end man. next week will this be episode seven and briefly a uh, reminder that we have uh, episode 100 of the podcast coming up and we're going to be doing some uh listener we're mail do a pickle, pickle reactions pod, yeah. pickle cast um we're going to do some listener mail and Pickled stuff pink so pod pickle. So send in your uh, send in pickles. Any questions, comments. Give us your pickles. Give us your pickles. <laughs> send in your pickles. Uh, send in your send whatever you want to send in Nickels. feedback or on, Insta- on, on uh, social media, and uh, we will uh, we will respond to your Sickles. emails in episode one hundred. Trickles. Uh, but until next week, treacle. Send us your treacle. It, it, yeah, oh, ooh. Or just tell us recommendations. Because we don't have that in America. So. It's hard to find in America. Uh, so treacle. Uh, treacle. treacle yeah. Yes. Uh, anyway, yeah. T- 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 Never mind. Ne- next next week is when we'll, we'll talk, talk to you next. Treacle, and uh, uh, until then, have a good one and um, uh, to- toodaloo. Tendy smelled like slug digested scorpion. <laughs> yeah. I am a skin of evil. Oh, More like a puddle of Ah! Damn you!